So I'm Ian Hurd. I'm a professor of political science at Northwestern University in Chicago. The idea of legitimacy, I think, refers to the belief that a person might have that some rule or institution has a kind of rightful authority and that it deserves their deference. I see the concept as being fundamentally subjective in the sense that it exists inside a person and it refers to their sense of the rules and institutions around them. When a person feels the legitimacy of some institution or rule, then I think it makes sense to imagine that they will see it as deserving of respect. If it's a rule, I think they're more likely to defer to it and acquiesce in the rule. If it's an institution, they're probably less likely to seek to overthrow the institution. So from the person's point of view, this belief changes their orientation towards institutions of political power and authority. The concept of legitimacy, I think, travels pretty well across different political settings, and it makes just as much sense to ask about how people feel regarding the legitimacy of, let's say, the International Monetary Fund, as it does to ask them about the legitimacy of the EU or of their national government. Uh, it might also make sense to think about private institutions of authority and power in terms of legitimacy, thinking of something like uh, a bank that finances a mortgage and how a person might think about the kind of authority that that entails over them. So the concept travels across uh, quite well, um, but the dynamics of what it means to be in a relationship of legitimate authority presumably change in different contexts because the stakes are different. The interests are different. Um, the kinds of political power that are involved are presumably different. The strategies of legitimation presumably are different. And whether legitimacy matters or not may, different as may be different as well. There may be situations where political power exists and its legitimacy is sort of immaterial. People are just stuck under its authority. They have no capacity to resist. In that case, it may make less sense to analyze the situation in terms of legitimacy, even though it's a power relationship, a hierarchy. We could think about international institutions, let's say the UN, in sort of the same way we might think about Supreme Courts in a domestic constitutional setting, in that the, it's an institution that's meant to have some kind of supreme political authority, but doesn't really have the capacity to enforce its decisions directly. Those kinds of institutions presumably rely on legitimacy more than others to get anything done, since the compliance of subordinates is in some sense more consensual. It can only be consensual. It has to be voluntarily given since the institution doesn't really have the coercive enforcement capacity uh, to back up its decisions. So we might think of international, international institutions, we might think of international institutions in the same way we think about Supreme Courts as being tremendously reliant on perceptions of their legitimacy in order to have any effect. I think the current moment is a useful one for distinguishing a couple of different ways of thinking about legitimacy. Some people would see the Brexit crisis and, and, and the Trump crisis as evidence that these international institutions perhaps didn't have as much legitimacy as one thought. I think it makes more sense to see this as evidence that legitimation and delegitimation are used strategically by political actors who are looking to accomplish some political goal. So those who were pushing for Brexit before the vote used the language of legitimacy and illegitimacy to create uh, a voting possibility for Brexit. And I think it shows how legitimation is perhaps better understood as a resource, a strategic tool that can be, if you like, weaponized in the hands of people who want to accomplish something. And this makes as much sense for those critics of international institutions, as the Brexiters are, as it does for the defenders of international institutions. Since those people, the defenders, are looking to use the language of legitimation to support an institutional order 
that they favor, just as much as the critics are using the same tactics to undermine it. So I think the, the current moment is a really neat uh, illustration of the fact that legitimation is a constantly uh, contested um, phenomenon that's very important for certain kinds of social stability, but that is never settled. And it's always being invoked instrumentally by actors who are looking to accomplish something with it, fighting for or against some policy. Well, let's separate a couple things. Uh, on the one hand, the intellectual models by which people understand the world then separate that from the international rules that, if you like, govern or are used to govern actual outcomes. Uh, on the intellectual model side, one story from the liberal internationalists is that the current institutions of global governance uh, provide a kind of consensual, uh, mutually beneficial institutional order a frame within which politics can happen. I think that vision of what the world is can be contrasted with an alternative interpretation that sees these institutions as essentially dominating rather than consensual. And those two visions compete with each other for attention. We can use various kinds of empirical evidence to make the case for one or the other. And so I think there's a f bright future in the contestation over those interpretations. Now on the other side, the more empirical side, we have an actually existing order of rules and institutions that to some degree governs outcomes, and it may be more contested than in the past in the sense that perhaps the international order represented by the UN Security Council with respect to the use of force may be uh, less hegemonic than it looked 20 years ago in practice. But I think on that empirical side, the institutional order has always been uh, somewhat shallow or at least needs to be accompanied by an understanding of the sort of great power interests and desires that seemed to me to be a more direct uh, piece of governance. So the actual outcomes of international affairs, I think, are more directed by what these strong states want to accomplish, and they may well use international rules and institutions to accomplish it. When they do, it helps them if those are seen as legitimate. So those strong states, I think, are pushing their agendas. Uh, it's hard to say whether they will continue to see these institutions as a useful way to push their agenda as their agendas conflict. But I think that it's safe to say that the main engine of international outcomes is going to be what these strong governments want.